Hey everyone and welcome to the channel. So today we get to check out the 2023 Audi RS7. Huge shout out to Audi Greenville for providing this sedan for me today. Make sure you guys check out their website. All that info is down in the description. The RS7 that you see behind me is finished off in florette silver metallic with an MSRP just over $138,000. And to start off today's review, let's take a look at what powers this RS7. Underneath the hood is the 4-liter twin-turbo V8 with the hybrid electric motor. This is paired to the 8-speed Tiptronic automatic transmission and pumps out 591 horsepower around 6,000 RPM and 590 pound-feet of torque as low as 2,000 RPM. That power is sent through the Quattro all-wheel drive system. This weighs in right around 4,900 pounds. It'll do 0 to 60 in as quick as 3 seconds with a top speed of 190 miles an hour and it has a fuel capacity of 19.3 gallons. You'll expect to see around 14 miles per gallon in the city and 21 out on the highway. This has a wheelbase of 115.3 inches. Its overall length is 197.2. It has a width of 76.8 and a height of 56.1 inches. As we move on to the exterior styling now for this RS7, there's not too many changes for the 23 year model. We're gonna start off with the hexagonal grille right in the middle because it has a great design to it. The Audi badge is chrome. There's also a forward-facing camera just underneath that, along with a sensor on both sides. Those are a part of the adaptive cruise and all of that technology. Now there's some parking sensors in the lower section of that grille, along with cutouts too, to provide a lot of cooling to that twin turbo engine. There's more air inlets and mesh on both sides along with some parking sensors and this even has the adaptive LED headlights along with the LED DRLs and turn signals. I love the sequential design that the turn signals have and they share the same bars with the DRL so it's nice that they're integrated. There's even another cutout in the very lower section along with a lot more contoured lines for that lower lip and as you can tell with the hexagonal grille all those sharp edges running around it even on the sides of those air inlets just underneath the headlights and then for this hood very clean lines running down both sides meeting the top section of that grille very nicely so it gives it that aggressive look for this sporty sedan. As we make our way to the side now this has the 21 inch by 10 and a half inch wheels with a multi-spoke design to them. I love this color. Definitely a great contrast with this exterior silver. Now this particular model has the $9,000 carbon ceramic option with the red brake calipers. They measure in at 16 and a half inches up front, just over 14 inches in the rear. A massive brake caliper setup for the sedan. Plenty of horsepower, plenty of stopping power at the same time. Now for these side mirrors, they are body colored, feature the integrated turn signal. There's another camera underneath them. I'll show that camera system later. This even has a sunroof too. All the window trim is finished off in more of that silver to tie nicely with the wheels. And this even has the full adaptive suspension. You can raise and lower the vehicle just to make it easier to enter and exit or to give you a little bit more height if you're going over speed bumps. And having that sport back design to it, it flows nicely all the way to the rear. I love this line that starts just above that rear door handle, coming through the rear fender all the way to the back taillights. Gives it a great design from the side. And as we work our way to the rear end, this does have a camera right in the middle. It's just underneath the Audi logo. RS7 is on that driver's side. Now this does have a deployable rear spoiler, which will go up at speeds. All the parking sensors are right in the middle. There's more of that brush trim running through the lower diffuser just to give it a great look. And then there's the dual exhaust on both sides with the gloss black tips. So there is a look at the exterior for this RS7. Let's work our way to the cargo space now. You can use the button that's located up underneath the Audi logo. If I just double tap the button on the key fob, you can do that as well. And with that sportback design, it gives you a lot more interior space compared to a traditional trunk. So if this is your only vehicle, it is very practical. Now over on the driver's side, there's a net for a little bit of storage. There's tie down hooks so you can safely secure items. And then underneath the floor, if I raise this up, you can actually fold this backwards all of the way. Now we have the sub, a little bit of storage. You probably maybe could fit a spare tire in here if you needed to, but there's some other tools and equipment needed for that. And that can easily close this up. There's also a 12 volt over on that passenger side. And then when you remove this cover and fold the back seats down, that gives you a lot more interior space where you could probably fit a bicycle or something like that. It definitely provides you with a lot of interior room. And then for this power lift gate, the button on the right side will close and lock it. The one on the left side will just close it. 
And now we can work our way to these back seats. What I love about the R7 is that you can lock and unlock it using the back door handle, which makes it really convenient. Now for this door panel, it's finished off in carbon fiber, brushed aluminum. There's Alcantara on the backside and even leather. Brushed aluminum is on the release handle. This has the Bang & Olufsen sound system and a little bit of storage in the lower section of the door. So a very premium feeling interior. And that goes along with these Napa leather seats. RS is nicely embroidered in the top. There's a nice hexagonal pattern running down the inserts. And now at five foot 10, it's time to hop into the back seats. Even with that sport back design for the roof, it's not all that hard to make my way in here. And with the front seat set at my height, I have plenty of room. There's also a net behind both front seats for added storage. Two air vents are right in the middle. And then there's a nice LCD screen where you can go through all the climate controls, the heated seats, a lot of controls for your backseat passengers. There's even some USB-Cs and a 12 volt so you can charge electronics. Now, as far as headroom goes, like I mentioned with this sport back design, my head is just up against the headliner, but these are pretty comfortable seats. I could definitely ride around town, maybe out on the highway. We have a grab handle here, another window behind me there. So it gives you a lot of visibility from the back seats as well. And then right in the middle, if I open up this armrest, you'll see there's a little bit of storage space on the back section. And then there's two cup holders in the front section if you need to utilize those. And this middle seat also folds down by itself. So if I just pull on that tab underneath the headrest, you can fold that one down individually if you need to get some longer items through and you have a passenger on both sides. Now, as far as visibility goes from the back seats, like I mentioned earlier, with that window just behind the normal window there, definitely gives you a lot more visibility. I love this interior for the back, very nice to see. Now, as we move on to the front seats now, the door panels finished off just like the rear. However, there's the addition of lock and unlock, all of the memory seating adjustments. There's even the side mirror adjustments, which are power folding and heated. There's a release for that rear lift gate, along with more storage space, more leather, all of those materials. The front seats are finished off just like the rear with RS badge, very nice seat. All of the automatic adjustments are down on the side. However, the front is manual. So if I pull on that tab, if you need a little bit more leg comfort, you can pull that out as needed. And then there's some brushed aluminum on the door sill with RS7. And it's very easy to enter and exit from the front seats. Now I do have this back in its lowest position, so that makes it much easier, of course. And then the steering wheel is completely covered in perforated leather with a nice design to it. I love all the gray stitching, the notches on both sides too. The RS badge is on the bottom. There's piano black along with some more brush trim. Now on this right side is Bluetooth and voice commands along with volume and tuning. There's even an RS button. On this left side, you can use all those controls to go through the virtual cockpit. And then this is the cruise and adaptive cruise control settings on that stock on the left side. Let's fire up this RS7 with my foot on the brake. That button is located down in the center and we can bring this to life. And then looking at this virtual cockpit now, currently you can see the navigation on the left side. Tack is right in the middle along with miles per hour and what gear the vehicle is in. On the right side is power and torque. And then there's fixed information like the engine temperature and then the fuel gauge. Now to go through all that other information using these controls, currently it's showing the navigation. If I scroll over, now we can look at your Bluetooth when you have that paired along with music. And then there's a few more settings to go into like driver assistance. You can pull up your long and short term memory along with your consumption and then look at the date and the time. Now, if you wanna view this in full screen, so you're looking at the navigation and you'd like to view that, simply click on that button. And now we have that in full screen where you can even zoom in and zoom out. So if you're going somewhere and you'd like to have the map front and center, you can easily do that. Now you can also look at all this other information and it will pull up your tack as well as your miles per hour on each side of that screen. And then going back to the nav, they will minimize in the lower sections there. So it's really nice to see that. Now being the RS7, we do have the RS button. So if I push on that once, this gauge cluster will change again to where you can see the tack on both sides of the miles per hour as well as what gear you're in, in almost like a drag strip version. So it's nice to see that. Now if you hold on this button again, there's the RS2, which turns off the traction control. And then if I go back to RS1, you can see the G-force meter on that left side and you can still go through all that other information. So if you'd like to have that sportier gauge cluster set up, Really cool to see that. You can also look at your tire pressure as well as the temperature of the tires too. And then as we move on to the left side of the steering wheel, down in the lower section is a little compartment where you can place some items if you need to. 
There's some piano black, brushed aluminum, more of the carbon fiber surrounding all of the headlight adjustments. There's one air vent. The entire dash is finished off in leather, which is a nice touch to see. And this even has the heads up display. It might be a little hard to see right now, but in the RS setting, the tack is running across the top. There's the oil temperature as well as miles per hour. And if I take it out of the RS setting, it'll simply just show miles per hour as well as the lane keeping assist. Right in the middle, there are two air vents leading all the way over to the air vent on the passenger side. There's more carbon fiber and brushed aluminum and it surrounds the center infotainment system where currently you can see all these icons like radio and media. There's also phone, navigation. If I go into vehicle now, you can go through the drive select and go through comfort, auto and dynamic as well as being able to raise and lower this vehicle. You can adjust your RS1 and RS2 settings and you'll see them pop up in that center gauge cluster there. If we go back, we can go into the RS monitor where you can look at oil temperature, you have your sport differential, fluids, brake rotors, you can monitor the temperatures, look at the G-force meter and a larger screen, as well as your tire pressure, which is great to see. There's also lighting and visibility, you can go into the seats, there's some favorites too. And then back on the home screen, there's a few more icons that you can go through on that right side. And then over on the left side, you have that triple split design with navigation, phone, and media. So you can look at all of that on one screen. There's also the serious music. You can go into your music when you have your phone paired, as well as being able to pull up your phone when you have that connected. And then the last one is nav. So if your passengers need to see the navigation as well, you can quickly pull that up on that center screen. And then below that, we have a slightly smaller screen that has a lot more information to go through, basically all of your climates. However, there is a row just above that. We have the engine start stop feature. There's also the parallel parking. So you can push on that and that will aid you in parking. If I push on all of those squares, you can pull up presets. So you can put in your home address or other addresses that you frequently go to. There's the garage door buttons right next to that. So you can program those as needed. We have the rear spoiler. So you can deploy that or put it down just depending on how you'd like to have it. And then the last button there, you can turn that screen off if you'd like to. The one just to the left of that is for the heads up display. So you can configure that as needed. But getting back to all these climate adjustments now, if I turn this on, you can see the fan speed, where you'd like the air to go. There's also the temperature. This even has heated and ventilated seats. There's the sinking controls right in the middle. If I click on those three buttons now, you can adjust the heated steering wheel along with the rear climate adjustments. So you can control that from the front if you need to. And then just underneath that is a shortcut to the driving mode. So as I already showed, you can quickly get to those. There's traction control as well as the hazards and a few defrosters right next to that. Now there's the engine start stop button, which I already showed. And then we have a shortcut to the camera system. So currently it's showing the forward facing camera along with the top down view. And then there's so many different angles just depending on what you need to see and how you are driving, especially in parking lot situations, this is going to be very beneficial. There's also a shortcut to the parallel parking so you can quickly get to that. So I really like the camera system. There's even the 3D view where you can click on these presets to see exactly what is around this vehicle. Definitely gives you the visibility that you need. To the left of that, if I push on this button, is another shortcut to the parallel parking. And then the one on the right is for the driver assistance. So you can have that on maximum, individual, or basic, depending on your needs. There's power and volume for the radio on that far side. And then there's two cup holders with a 12 volt and a little bit of storage. You can place the key fob right in the middle if you'd like to. And then moving on to the leather wrap shifter, the release is on this left side. If I push this forwards, that is actually for reverse, so you'll see that appear. I can go all the way into drive, even pop it over into the manual setting. You can shift using the shifter or these steering wheel mounted paddle shifters that have a nice design to them. And then park is simply just by pushing on the P. You'll see behind that is the electronic parking brake. There's more brushed aluminum and leather for the center armrest. If I open this up, this reveals the wireless charging pad two auxiliaries and a little bit of storage so you could place items there if you need to. You can actually slide this forwards and backwards too, just depending on your style. And then over on the passenger side is the glove box with plenty of room for all that information. We'll take one last look at these seats which have a nice design to them. And as I mentioned, this does have a sunroof. That adjustment is in the middle for the sunshade as well as being able to open up the sunroof all of the way. So that is nice to have. There's also the touch sensitive dome lights on each side and a call button on the back. As we get behind the wheel now for this 23 Audi RS7, this is probably one of my favorite family style sedans that has that sport back design to it. It also has plenty of power paired with that all wheel drive system. You definitely don't have to worry about getting all that power sent through the tires. 
and to get you up and moving. Now I had a friend who owned an RS7 and I think he's made right around 700 horsepower to the wheels. So uh, right under 600 from the factory is pretty awesome to see, but the tuning potential for the RS7, if you have a family, you need this practicality, but you also want to do this. Ooh. And that was just in normal mode. I haven't put it into the RS setting yet. This is so much fun and taking turns like that, even with the adaptive suspension, it handles well. This is a performance oriented family style vehicle that I could definitely get on board with. And aside from the performance, Audi is just known for having a very nice interior, especially for the price point too. Carbon ceramics do a good job coming around that turn. You almost forget that you're in a four door vehicle I mean, I can see the, the back arches like I mentioned earlier. As far as visibility goes now, I can easily see over this left shoulder, plenty of glass in all directions. And with it in the RS setting, I am surprised that it doesn't get much louder in the RS setting. I think it would be cool to see more of an active style exhaust to it because when you put it from dynamic even into a comfort or individual, not much of a change. As you heard in the exhaust revs, RS doesn't really change it that much. So I would like to see a little bit more of a loud exhaust. If you want that option, you can shut it off or you can turn it on, which I think would be really cool to see. And as we switch over to the POV angle, you can see what it's like to be behind the wheel of this RS7. So as we come around this turn, we can do another acceleration. About quarter throttle, Nothing too crazy for today's video, but from experience, I know that these can be super quick. I'll link down in the description the video to the 700 wheel horsepower RS7 that my friend had, we made a video on. So if you'd like to see really ripping on it, check out that video. But even going around turns like that at a normal rate of speed, the handling on this car is incredible for the weight of it, for the size of it. You really can't tell that it's as big as it looks. And then a quick glance at visibility from the driver's seat. Over my right shoulder, I can easily see out of that side, and then a glance over my left shoulder, plenty of glass, which is of course great. But I think that's gonna wrap it up for my walk around review and test drive, getting behind the wheel of this 2023 Audi RS7. Once again, huge shout out to Audi Greenville for providing this sleeper style sport back for me today. Make sure you check out their website. All that info is down in the description. And if you enjoyed today's video, make sure you give it a huge thumbs up and consider smashing that subscribe button so you don't miss out on our daily uploads. I will see you all in the next video.